If you and I were to go to a mall with hundreds of people in it all the time, and I were to offer you $100 to identify for me five Christians in five minutes, do you think you could do it? If so, what would you look for? Would you look for people wearing cross necklaces similar to this one? Would you look for people praying before their meal in the food court, or a woman reading her Bible as she watches her kids play in the play area? Would you look for an uncontainable joy hidden behind the smile of a stranger, or a verse tattooed on the body of someone else? How would you do it? Would you look for it? What distinguishes Christians from everyone else in the world around us? First century Jews had many distinguishable features that separated them from the Gentile world, and not the least of which was the covenant act of circumcision. In Romans chapter 2, Paul is speaking of God's righteous judgment, reminding us that God's kindness is intended to bring us to repentance. And then he goes on to address the Jews specifically, condemning their hypocrisy, saying that they are not living out what they are attempting to teach to the masses. And then specifically referring to the covenant act of circumcision, he says in verse 25, circumcision has value if you observe the law. But if you break the law, you would become as though you had not been circumcised. And so first century Jews who would have read this verse would have thought that was completely ridiculous. They would have been so enraged at Paul because they believed that this covenant act of circumcision that had been given to their father Abraham gave them some sort of special advantage over the Gentiles that were around them. It gave them some sort of something to boast about, their, their faithfulness, their, their religiosity, it gave them something to be proud of. Yet Paul says, humbling them, that these things have no value, that they are empty, that they are meaningless apart from faithful obedience. And so in Charles Ellicott's commentary of this particular verse, he says precisely the same language can be used in reference to the Christian sacraments. Meaning that being a Christian has no value apart from the law. Going to church, being baptized, being a community of believers, praying to God has no value. And in fact, are in vain and emptiness if we are not walking in faithful obedience to Jesus and to who he calls us to be. In fact, it would almost be as if my parents gave me a Tesla Model X, or a Lamborghini Aventador, or a McLaren 570S at the age of 12. Sure, it'd be a nice gift. It'd be expensive, it'd be cool, it'd be shiny, something that I could boast about to all my friends. But I couldn't use the gift to its full capacity until I met one condition. I got my license. And in the same way, these gifts of prayer, of baptism, of communing with Christ's body are amazing to talk about. We love to say that we are Christians, but often we fail to walk in faithful obedience. And so to access these gifts in their full capacity, to bring completeness and wholeness up out of them, we must meet one condition, to walk in faithful obedience. You see, I urge you that the term Christian should not just define our heritage, but our character. And so as Christians, we should be willing to say to Jesus, Jesus, because you gave it all for me, I will give it all for you. I will not let the outer markings of being a perfect Christian cover up the wickedness of a wayward heart. Instead, I will turn to you, repent of my actions, and begin to walk humbly in faithful obedience to you. And so at the beginning of this message, I posed a question. What distinguishes Christians from the world around us? How would you tell? How would you identify five Christians in a wall in five minutes to get my hundred dollars? I would say that what distinguishes us from the world is the way that we walk in faithful obedience to Christ. 
And so today, I challenge you to do just that. To heed his call. To not just say that you're a Christian, not just say that you're religious as the Jews did, but to actually walk in obedience to him and who he has called you to be.